Welcome to the N1 Fitness Podcast. I'm your host, Marcus Sadu, and today we're going to be talking about starvation mode. So first of all, what is starvation mode? Starvation mode is the idea that if you consume too few calories, your body goes into what's called starvation mode and hoards or holds on to body fat, resulting in no weight loss. Now, you might be wondering, how is it that so many of our ancestors starved to death in the past in less affluent or food scarce societies, while simultaneously people aren't able to lose weight even on extremely low calorie diets in the present in more affluent food abundant societies? It's a good question, right? So starvation mode only seems to be a thing that folks talk about in more affluent areas of the world, or essentially parts of the world where we have lots of food. It's kind of odd, right? Coincidence? I don't know. So if the body does go into starvation mode, if you eat too few calories, but then the body gains weight if you eat too many calories, as we're all well aware of, the starvation mode idea implies that you have to hit some calorie sweet spot that's not too much, it's not too little, but just right in order to lose weight. That would suck, okay? Fortunately, it is not true. If starvation mode was a real phenomenon, the agricultural revolution wouldn't have happened because the reason it did was to stave off death from starvation. So in short, it is a myth, it doesn't exist, but how did this idea gain traction? First of all, It is incredibly easy to underestimate how many calories we take in on a daily basis. And therefore, when you think you're taking in, say, 1,200 calories and not losing weight, but you're actually taking in closer to 2,000, I could totally see how someone would think that their body was hoarding or holding on to body fat. Also, we tend to overestimate how many calories we burn in a day, and therefore, we think that the calorie equation is working even more so in our favor when really we don't burn all that many calories via things like workouts. A typical workout may burn, say, 200-ish calories for the average person, I would say, or possibly even three or 400 max if you're going really, really hard. There's also another factor in that there are folks out there that actually want to believe that their quote-unquote problem is unsolvable because it means that they're off the hook, right? If their body goes into starvation mode, what can they do? They might as well just give up and eat whatever they want because it's hopeless. We see examples of this in absolutely every area of life, whether it's our work lives, personal lives, relationships, whatever. It's essentially a woe is me mentality where the world is seemingly out to get these individuals. And if you take a step back and look at it objectively, It's pretty arrogant to think that the world has nothing better to do than to go out of its way to screw these individuals over. But unfortunately, that's just the perspective that these certain folks choose to take. Now, let's go through an example so we can see this idea in action. And we'll use Betty as an example. Betty is 30 pounds overweight and has tried all sorts of fad diets, detox teas, as well as cleanses. And she loses weight initially, but she can't seem to get past that 10 pounds down mark before she puts it all back on. Now, this time, Betty decides that she's going to go on a 1200 calorie diet, but it's Friday today and she obviously can't start until Monday because who starts a diet on Friday? She knows that she's only going to be eating 1200 calories starting on Monday. So the weekend before she gets rolling is a free for all. She satisfies any and every craving that she's got. And then Monday rolls around and she's got her 1200 calorie plan locked and loaded. Monday, she hits her 1200 calorie goal. Same with Tuesday, same with Wednesday, and even Thursday. On Friday, she follows her plan to a T during the day, but then has movie night with her husband and thinks, well, I've been so good all week that I can have a bowl of ice cream tonight. So she does. Saturday, she wakes up, she follows her plan for breakfast and lunch, but then she decides she deserves a meal out. So she goes to a restaurant and enjoys a pasta meal with a slice of cheesecake for dessert. Sunday, she wakes up and she adds a couple slices of bacon to her regular meal, as well as a couple pieces of toast because her husband is making something different and it just smells too good, she can't resist. 
She hops back on track Sunday for lunch and dinner and then wakes up Monday morning. She weighs herself and she's down a pound and a half. However, she feels like she's put in so much work and she should have lost more because she only had a few little slip ups which couldn't have possibly resulted in enough calories to offset her week that much. But let's do a little bit of quick math. She had a bowl of ice cream on Friday night that would have easily clocked in at five, 600 calories. Her pasta meal on Saturday night was 1,200, no problem. And she forgot that she also had a few pieces of bread on the table with butter while she was waiting for her pasta meal. Oh, and a glass of wine. The bread was 100 calories per slice and the two tablespoons of butter that she added were 100 calories each as well. So dinner was a grand total of 1,750 calories. Oh no, and we forgot the cheesecake. That was another 600 calories. So Betty's total for Saturday night was 2,350 calories. Now, Sunday morning, she added a couple slices of bacon and a few pieces of toast, which added 400 calories to her breakfast. And you can't eat dried toast, so we've got to add another 200 calories from the peanut butter she used. So what are we looking at when we tally up the week as a whole? Monday to Thursday, she was on point. So those are 1,200 calorie days apiece. Friday, the ice cream left Betty at 1,800 calories. Saturday was a big day. She had 800 calories during the day from her regular plan and 2,350 at night. So 3,150 on Saturday. And Sunday was 1,800. All of a sudden, Betty's 1,200 calorie diet turned into a 1,650 calorie diet when you equate for the entire week. And that's assuming she was absolutely perfect Monday through Thursday. So when week one is all said and done, Betty had an average of 1,650 calories per day and lost a pound and a half, which ain't too shabby, but she feels like she should have lost more because, well, she just wanted to lose more. Week two looks about the same and she drops another pound and a half. And then week three, she slips up a little bit more and maintains her weight. She's discouraged and therefore goes on a bit of a binge weekend. She gains two pounds back. She tries to get back on track on the following Monday, but it's just too hard for her. She doesn't like the idea of not being in control of her impulses. And she's feeling a little entitled as well, being that she thinks that she should have gotten better results than she did. She then hears about the starvation mode idea. Pretty appealing, right? The truth is ideas like starvation mode are never going to go away because there are always going to be individuals that don't want to take ownership. But as I mentioned before, this whole idea is really easy to debunk when we have our entire human history as evidence being that our ancestors starved due to inadequate food availability. Also, this idea of starvation mode is just one of the weight loss scapegoats out there, right? Folks will blame hormones, they'll blame chemicals, menopause, GMOs are the reason why they can't lose weight, artificial sweeteners, the list goes on. The truth is, it's lifestyle. It's lack of consistency that's the problem. Now, I've worked with coming up on 350, 400 folks or so over the last eight and a half years, and I still have never seen someone not able to lose weight in a calorie deficit. Not once has it come up. And the tricky thing is, is that food has a whole bunch of other stuff tied into it in our society. And we also have these very ambitious minds that are inherently biased. So for example, when our goal is weight loss, our minds tend to favor the quote unquote good food decisions that we make. And we tend to downplay the poor food decisions that we make. And this is why it's so tough to estimate our calorie intake without actually tracking it accurately. It's just like having the goal of saving money and then estimating how much you've spent over the course of the month without looking at your detailed visa statement. It's really hard, especially when we've got that goal of saving because the mind tends to overlook or favor decisions made that moved you in the right direction versus the wrong direction. So we actually do this in relationships as well. We tend to remember all of the great things that we do for other folks, but much more easily forget the great things that folks do for us. It's just the way that we're wired and given that, if we want a better result, specifically in the instance of weight loss or fat loss, we've gotta put our emotions aside for a second and just look at the facts because our bodies are a perfect reflection of our habits. When I was 50 pounds heavier than I am right now, it wasn't because of starvation mode. 
It wasn't because of chemicals or hormones or anything like that. It was because I consistently ate way too much. So the take home point here is fortunately starvation mode is a myth. So if you're having a hard time losing weight and you don't know why, it's because you're taking in too much energy in one way or another. If you're interested in personalized one-on-one -on -one nutritional coaching with me, you can click the link in the description below, or you can head on over to n1fitness.com forward slash coaching. Follow me up on Instagram at n1fitness and friend me on Facebook at Marcus Sadu. Thanks so much for tuning in and I will catch you on the next episode. See ya.